attended morning class of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Science of Cagayan State University, Apari Campus. I hope everyone is still fine in the new normal education. Last week, we had a very productive virtual lesson. I am happy that you were able to learn all about culture and moral behavior and developing virtue as a habit. For today, before starting our lesson, let's have an activity. I will show you some pictures and I want you to tell what do you feel towards the picture using emojis. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. First picture. Second picture. Third picture. Fourth picture. And the last picture. Excellent! I guess all of you have different reactions and feelings on the pictures being shown. Now, let's try to react on this situation. One sunny Wednesday afternoon, Charmaine and Vanessa are on their way to the market to buy some cake for Jomar's birthday. On the street, a child beggar suddenly approached them and asking for a money. Charmaine immediately told that the child beggar must go home and study, while Vanessa immediately get some coins from her purse and give it to the child and told him to go home and not to waste his time on the street. Now, for you, who among the girls exude appropriate actions towards the child beggar? Who among them showed the right course of actions? Is it Charmaine who told the child to go home? Or Vanessa, who immediately gives some coins and tell the child not to wander on the street anymore? Let me know your answers at the comment section. Let's now proceed to our topic. Let's ponder on, on this adage by Mr. Anonymous. No one can deny the fact that when the human person is placed in a moral dilemma, his or her decisions can also be greatly affected by his or her feelings. Indeed, that adage is true because when we are amid of a moral dilemma, our feelings are greatly affected by our actions and decisions. Feelings are used to describe experiences and physical sensation through touch, and sentience. It is immediate expression that involves the body, more intimate than thinking. For instance, when you are being serenaded by your boyfriend or girlfriend, you will be flattered and in love. Also, when you are being ghosted by your admirer, you will get angry as well as get sad. These are just but few of the feelings that we experience. It is more intimate than thinking because it involves our heart when responding to what situation you are in. Next, moral decision making. It is an essential asset for humans' integration in social context. It is the ability to decide which which is the right course of action once we have spotted the ethical issue. Basically, when we talk about moral decision-making, it involves more of our mind. For example, we are in between of the dilemma of choosing our sibling who is stole from his store. Will you report him to the authority or keep it a secret instead? Through moral decision, we produce a reasonable and defensible answer to an ethical question or a case and going into consideration when making a decision. This includes the right to choose what kind of life to lead, to be told the truth, not to be injured, and the right to privacy among others. Now, what then is the role of feelings in moral decision-making? Always bear in mind 
that feelings play a major role in most moral decision making. Remember that decision of people may vary when they are happy from when they are sad. Why? It is because people are taking full account of their emotions rather than balancing it with their mind. Also, words that are coming out from the mouth are affected by emotions that we feel and so with our actions. To know more about this, let's take a look in the roles. There are three known roles of feelings towards moral decision making. First is the feelings as instinctive response to moral dilemmas. Ethicists hold that moral judgments at their best should be emotional, meaning that ethics is a matter of emotions. Our emotions and feelings can be a great factor in moral decision making. Why? This is because feelings are seen as a necessary in ethical judgment. For example, Chris murdered Jones. For him, it is an achievement, however, not a positive one. This achievement will result on Chris guilt, sadness, and depression. Now, what causes Chris to feel guilty, sad, and depressed? This is because of his judgment within himself as an evil and bad person, which resulted his feelings instinctively and naturally kicking in to make a response. Okay, some of you may tell that this is because he is very emotional. No, this is not because of him being emotional. It is because of his feelings which is already instinctively trained and innate in responding to such dilemma. <clears throat> Another, Olivia graduated as a magna cum laude of batch 2020. For her, it is an achievement which made her intensely happy and fulfilled. Her judgment of herself resulted her feelings instinctively kicking in to make a response. What Olivia felt is instinct or innate or natural for her body to feel because of his judgment within herself as she achieved Latin honors. Hence, these feelings or emotions are judgments about the accomplishment of one's goal. What if these feelings are exaggerated? If these feelings are exaggerated and misinterpreted, it can become obstacles in becoming ethical. The next role of feelings in moral decision making is feelings as obstacles to making the right decisions. There are two theories supports feelings as obstacles in making the right decisions. Ethical subjectivism and emotivism. Ethical subjectivism, it is a mythical theory about the nature of moral judgments that holds the truth and falsity of ethical propositions, which is dependent on the feelings, attitudes, or standards of a person. Thus, it is based solely on feelings. For instance, a LGBTQA plus rally their pride in the street. One, out of the blue, shouted, homosexuality is bad. Unknowingly, behind his actions towards LGBTQA+, is due to his history being abused and molested by a homosexual. He only made shout those words, for he is very angry. It is contrary to the belief that morality is about objective facts. This theory states that moral judgments describe our personal feelings. It implies that each of us is infallible as we are honestly expressing our feelings about moral issues. Next, emotivism, an improved version of subjectivism 
as it is far subtler and sophisticated that is deemed invulnerable to many objections. This meta-ethical theory was developed chiefly by the American philosopher Charles L. Stevenson. It has been one of the most influential theories of ethics in the 20th century. It states that moral judgments express positive or negative feelings, which claims that ethical sentences do not convey authentic propositions. Emotivism claims that statements are good or evil or just expressing a subject's approval or disapproval of a particular thing. Emotivism has earned the nickname Bouye theory of ethics. Okay, for example, moral sentences are used as a means of influencing others' behavior. Let's have this situation. Minerva said, I saw Hagrid stole the phone of Luna. Sibyl replied, Really? That is so wrong and bad. I must not do it. Minerva then said, But you know, Draco saw him and reprimanded his actions immediately. Sibyl also replied, Draco is such a good person. I must see him as my model and do also his actions. Thus, the utterance is more like a command. Next, let's have moral sentences that are used to express the speaker's attitude. Minerva I saw Hagrid stole the phone of Luna. Sibyl It's a boo for him. Minerva But you know, Draco saw him and reprimanded of his actions immediately. Sibyl replied, Hooray for Draco's action. Thus, the utterance is more like an exclamation. Since ethical judgments are essentially commands and explanations, they are not true or false, so there cannot be moral truths and moral knowledge. Next is the feelings that can help in making the right decisions. Ethics without a feeling appears to go against Christian philosophy on love. For love is basically a strong liking, desire, or emotion. Admittedly, there are situations in which our feelings and likings are relevant to the rightness of our decisions and actions. It is a crucial art of what gives life a meaning and ought to play a guiding role in moral decision making. Nonetheless, the feelings are involved in moral thinking should be anchored on careful consideration of a full range of right goals including altruistic ones. For example, have you ever observed some people that they consider more of their practicality over their love for someone else? Like, Naya chose to love Ray because he is so wealthy and handsome. However, her feelings is not visible towards him. In this case, feelings are totally neglected. When you're going to decide on such a situation, you must consider the feelings, the love, so that there will be no regrets later on. Before I end this lesson, let me give you a simple quote. Never reply when you are angry. Never make a promise when you are happy. And never make a decision when you are sad. Thank you very much for listening. That's all for today's lesson.